After Colony 196, humanity finally achieves peace. But the ashes of war give birth to a new threat. We at Colony L3X18999 hereby wish to declare war against the nation. A child is building an empire to avenge her father. I will rule the world. With Gundams at her side, Earth will feel her fury. Drop the colony onto Earth. Stop this at once. Gundam Wing was a lot of things. Beyond just being an attempt to revitalize the franchise after the UC started to feel stretched a little thin, it ended up becoming a gateway for the West to get into not only Gundam, but anime as a whole. If you haven't seen the full Wing video that I put out last week, I'll post it in the description, but my views on it seem to align with a lot of yours out there in the audience. I never saw Wing as a kid, I was a G Gundam guy honestly, so when I watched Wing recently for the retrospective, I found that it has a great world with interesting characters that ended up being shallow, with a story that was lacking at best. Aesthetically, I really like the world of Wing, so hearing that Endless Waltz, the OVA follow-up taking place in After Colony 196, addressed almost all of my issues was very encouraging. Released in Japan in 1997, Endless Waltz was originally conceived as a three-episode OVA, detailing the further adventures of the pilots of Operation Meteor. It was recut into a feature-length movie later that year, with added footage and has since been called the Special Edition. Along with the extended battle sequences, the Special Edition has reordered scenes as well as a recut ending, although the tone remains pretty much the same. Endless Waltz also featured some pretty radical redesigns of the series' main mobile suits. The Wing Zero now has huge angel wings, the Death Scythe Hell has a way bigger cape and little spiked booties. It actually kind of looks stupid. And the Heavy Arms is blue. As far as the narrative of Endless Waltz goes, what we essentially got was a slight retreading of some of the themes and story beats of the full anime. Most importantly, the story is much more focused, which means we get to spend some more time on the important things, character interaction, and watching the mechs in action. Yes, if you couldn't tell, I very much enjoyed my time watching Endless Waltz, and I'd go so far as to say that most of my issues that I had with it pretty much boiled down to nitpicks at best. Which is great, because I was really drawn into the world and visuals of Gundam Wing, and yes, even Relina, the character that grated on my nerves most of all throughout Gundam Wing, is much better in Endless Waltz. With that being said, let's strap in and enjoy some Gundam Wing that is actually good. <laughs> Endless Waltz begins by giving us a look at what Sally has been up to since Wing. Sally was one of the characters in Wing who was actually smart and spent the runtime of the show actually fighting for her beliefs as a guerrilla fighter. Originally being an Alliance soldier, we see that Sally is now working for an organization known as the Preventers. The Preventers are exactly what it sounds like, a group of government special operatives charged with oversight of the Earth and colonies. We also see that Lady Oon and Noin are Preventers as well. Sally observes a suspicious shipment of titanium and we cut to two of our previous protagonists. Duo and Catra are in the process of shipping four of the five Gundams from Operation Meteor directly into the sun, as blowing them up obviously doesn't do the trick. In the years since the end of the anime, complete global demilitarization has taken place both on Earth and within the colonies. With this newfound peace, the Gundam pilots all decide that their machines are no longer needed, and except for Wu Fei, they prepare them for destruction. Katra, being the brains of the operation, plots a course directly towards the sun on a resource satellite that the Gundams are currently being stored on. Which is wonderful timing, because Relina, who is now the Vice Foreign Minister of the Earth Nation, is seen being drugged and then kidnapped at a meeting. 
As far as Relina goes, I think she actually probably should have gone back to high school instead of taking a government salary, but hey, you know, get after that bag, your dad is dead after all. It turns out that the leaders of a newer colony named L3X-18999 are scheming to pull off what Miliardo started. A young girl named Mary Maya claims to be the daughter of the late Trace Kushronada, and announces herself as the leader of a new movement to take over the colonies and Earth. Of course, the audience is given reason to doubt her lineage from the start, as we see her being backed by a man named Deckham Barton. Deckham is one of the men behind the original inception of Operation Meteor, where he partnered with the Gundam wing villain Kans Karant to take over the entirety of the Earth sphere. During the Wing anime, we're told that Operation Meteor's original idea involved a planet-wide massacre, but now we get to learn exactly how the plan was supposed to go. Deckham and Cans had originally planned to crash multiple colonies into the Earth all at the same time, and then in the ensuing chaos they would send the five Gundams down to Earth to cause even more destruction and pretty much just commit mass death. The reason that this original plan never came to fruition was because of the actions taken by the Gundam scientists and of the pilots themselves. One of my major complaints with the Gundam Wing anime was that it spent way too much time on poorly written political philosophy and not enough time getting to know the characters and their backstories. Luckily for pretty much everyone, Endless Waltz does fill in the blanks on some of our characters, though it's not as much as I would have liked, but hey, it's uh, better than nothing. Probably most importantly is Troa's backstory, as we see that the pilot we know as Troa Barton isn't really Troa Barton at all. He was once a nameless soldier working for the Barton Foundation. The real Troa is the son of Deckham and a complete asshole. When the scientists have doubts about the whole let's murder everyone part of Operation Meteor, Troa Barton basically tells them to fuck off and he's going to take the Gundam anyway causing him to be shot and killed by one of the engineers who had family on Earth. No Name hears this and offers to take the identity of Troa Barton and become the Heavy Arms pilot, to which the scientists agree because, well, why not? When the pilots hear the news that the colonies are being threatened, they all spring into action. Duo and Hero head towards the colony together, while Catra heads off with members of the Malguanot Corps to retrieve the Gundams. Troa, who went back to the circus and is now absolutely fucking ripped, heads off to the colony himself, only to find that Wufei has joined up with their forces. Cornered with no other options, Troa agrees to pilot a mobile suit for them as well. On their way to the colony, Duo notices that Hero's taken a little nap, and we're treated to a snippet of Hero's actual backstory. Unfortunately, as with Troas, it doesn't go super in-depth, but we do see that while working as an operative for the Operation Meteor faction, he accidentally blows up a little girl and her dog. As expected, this is pretty traumatic, and it goes a long way towards Hero's less than amicable attitude. Despite not really having much of a plan and deciding to just wing it, Duo and Hero board the colony after some incredible driving by Duo. They steal two mobile suits and come face to face with both Wufei and Troa. While Wufei seems like he would actually kill them if given the chance, Troa appears to purposefully miss the rockets, allowing the duo heh, to escape. They run to the interior of the colony where they see Maramea's shuttle heading toward the port. Of course, Deckham Barton isn't here in the colony, he's on a nearby resource satellite being a sneaky little guy. See, most of the mobile suits that Duo and Hero battled outside the colony were mobile dolls, which leads Noin and Sally to wonder where their new mobile suits are. Deckham reveals that he's about to send troops down to Earth from his command center, but Zek shows up in the brand spankin' new Tall Geese 3. Calling himself Preventer Wind, Zex does some awesome stuff, as he can't help but show off. Zex levels his giant gun at the satellite and threatens to blow Deckham back to hell, but Deckham doesn't seem very worried. He reveals that he's the true mastermind behind Operation Meteor and that Colony L3X18999 will fall to the earth and cause an eternal winter if Zex tries to stop him. With that, the mobile suits of Deckham's army depart and start descending to take over the earth. Hero and Duo shoot their way to the colony's control center, where they find that Troa isn't actually a bad guy, he's just pretending to be. 
Honestly, it's the second time he's done it, and it keeps working, so that's on Deckham. The pilots use the controls to restabilize the colony, effectively stopping the major part of Operation Meteor. When Zex hears this, he destroys the resource satellite. However, Deckham scoots on out of there just in the nick of time and descends to Earth. Hero is able to escape from the soldiers that break into the control room, but Duo is thrown in jail to keep Troa from revealing his true identity. We then learn from the narrator that Marimea's army took over most of the planet with little to no resistance, and now the only hope appears to be the arrival of the series' Gundams. Luckily, Catra is able to recover the mobile suits and then, with the use of a large explosion, is able to fling them back to Earth super fast. I gotta hand it to Catra here, if he can use an explosion with enough accuracy to get the Gundams back to Earth from Venus in about 24 hours, like, he can do pretty much anything. There's a nice interlude with the title song where we get a lot of Christmas imagery. Man, what is up with awesome Gundam OVAs set during Christmas? I mean, first we had War in the Pocket, and now Endless Waltz. It's like someone over there at Sunrise has an in with Santa. Maramea arrives at the headquarters of the World President with a captive Relina still in tow, and we see Hero recover the Wing Zero from space. We get a glimpse into Wu Fei's past here as well. He has the least amount of backstory shown, pretty much he just gets mad that Master O oh and the other colony leaders want to go ahead with Operation Meteor, so he steals the Shenlong Gundam and just vows to kill anyone who's evil. Yep, it's an incredibly simple backstory, and it feels like they didn't care about Wu Fei enough to try and make him likable. I know there's stuff about his dead wife in one of the mangas, but it's not in this movie, so Wu Fei still comes across as annoying and rushed. Hiro arrives in the Wing Zero and battles Wu Fei in what ends up being a pretty great fight. Honestly, the action in this movie is incredibly well animated, and even if you don't like the character stuff in the first half, well, the second half of the movie is pretty much just non stop mecha battles right up until the end. Which makes the rest of this video really simple because everything that happens is incredibly straightforward. While Hiro and Wu Fei battle from space down into the atmosphere and eventually onto the Earth's surface, Zex and his Tall Geese 3 is shown dispatching a ton of Deckham soldiers along with the other preventers. Eventually, Catra, Duo, and Troa all show up after retrieving their Gundams and lend a hand. Oh yeah, I gotta bring this up because it still confuses me. While Duo's in prison, he breaks out by pulling a small black object out of his hair and then kicking down a solid steel door? What the fuck did he have in his hair? Steroids? Hiro concludes the duel with Wu Fei by asking just how many more people he needs to kill to put an end to the battles and falls into the ocean. This causes Wu Fei to actually do some self-reflection and realize he really doesn't want everyone to explode like his home colony did. In a really weird inclusion for the movie version of Endless Waltz, Dorothy Catalonia shows up and inspires a bunch of citizens to fight for their own freedom. It's kind of weird because this one scene happens and then we don't really see her again. I expected it to lead to something, like her helping the final battle somehow, but it was pretty much just fan service. Though I'm not really sure who is begging for Dorothy Crazy Brows to have any screen time. I do like her random solid gold truck though, I half expected Exhibit to jump out and commit tax evasion. That's a pimp my ride joke for people that aren't as old as me. Well I guess we already got that back in Zeta with the Hayakashiki. As the Gundams continue to fight, they eventually just have nothing left. They're incredibly worn and battle damaged. As they discuss using the self-detonation devices, Wing Zero emerges from the ocean for one final attack. Hero targets the presidential estate, and even when told that Relina is inside, he fires in a moment that I really like. I think it shows Hero's character perfectly when Maramea is like, haha, our shields will withstand your attack, go ahead and try it, and he's just like, alright. Maramea doesn't seem particularly happy about someone actually trying to kill her, huh? Hero fires the Buster Cannon a total of three times, culminating in the final shot destroying not only the shelter that Deckham and Maramea are hiding in, but also the Wing Zero itself. I have to say, just like with the Wing anime, this show is S tier when it comes to tone and style. When Hero fires that final shot and the music kicks in, man, just goosebumps. And I don't even like Wing that much. <laughs> Hero! Ah! 
Anyhow, the shelter is destroyed, with an undercover Lady Oon saving Relina and Maramea from being crushed by falling debris. Citizens finally show up and back up both Wu Fei and the other Gundam pilots, and with this scene, Gundam Wing's philosophy of total pacifism flies completely out of the window, as all the major characters agree that you can't maintain peace without the ability and willingness to stand up for it. Even Relina says this, and in a moment of symbolic irony, slaps Maramea across the face, demonstrating that maybe she wasn't really a complete pacifist after all, and now she's thought about it for more than five minutes. Anyway, in the destroyed shelter, Deckham goes to shoot Relina after she convinces Maramea to stand down. Maramea, now knowing the error of her ways, steps in front of the bullet and collapses. Surprisingly, Deckham doesn't seem to care and says he'll just make another figurehead to take her place, but he severely overestimated the loyalty of his men because they are absolutely not cool with him shooting a 10-year-old in front of them, and they just execute him on the spot. It's actually kind of awesome. Hiro shows up to dramatically fire an empty handgun at Maramea to represent the fact that he doesn't have to kill anyone ever again. We get one final scene with our Gundam pilots taking part in their favorite activity, detonating their mobile suits. And look, maybe this is just nitpicking, but if they could just detonate them and be done with it, why were they shooting them into the sun at the start of the movie? Oh well. And that's pretty much it for Mobile Suit Gundam Wing Endless Waltz. Honestly, I went in not really expecting to like this movie, as my opinion was that the main anime series was less than stellar. However, I really ended up liking Endless Waltz, and I felt that it did everything that the series should have done, though not exactly to the extent that I wanted. The action itself is so much better than in the series, and it really gives every mobile suit its own time to shine. I mean, even my least favorite Gundam Sandrock gets a cool cape and some neat moments. Of course, Death Scythe Hell was cool in the series and it's even cooler now, and I'm a fan of the Wing Zero's huge angel wings. The action is accompanied by a great score too. Every time the music kicked in, I was hyped. Even the series' endless philosophical dialogues are barely present here and are mostly replaced with bog-standard villain speeches, which, while they aren't anything incredibly memorable, they at least didn't annoy me. As far as the villains go, they're pretty good. Deckham is cool, and I like that he ties back into the original plan of Operation Meteor. Maramea is kind of weak, honestly. I mean, for someone claiming to be the daughter of Trey's, she just doesn't have that charisma. Though she is just a puppet for Deckham, so I, I guess that makes sense. If I could have added just one thing, I guess it would have been more backstory for the pilots, but at a certain point, that kind of stuff would have just bogged the movie down, so I'm okay with what we got. And that brings us to the end of the Gundam Wing saga. I know a lot of people have asked me to take a look at the Zero and Glory of the Losers manga, and I might do that in the future, but for now, I, I think it's time we move on to the next thing in line. I broke my own rule this time and did the Endless Waltz video a little out of order so it would release right after the Wing video, so up next is my personal favorite Gundam OVA, Mobile Suit Gundam, the 8th MS Team. Can't wait to see you then.